This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Join an engaging IT learning community with ACI Learning and IT Pro. Hey, congratulations to Don Pizet, IT Pro's co-founder and original edutainer, and the entire TechNATO team for their 300th podcast. Good going, guys. Get your standard or premium IT Pro membership by using the code TWIT30 at checkout for 30% off. Check out go.acilearning.com slash TWIT to learn more. Medical devices are a great way to save lives, but not so great for actually protecting your data. In fact, we talked about this. Some hospitals actually have those devices in air gap environments. Now, according to this dark reading article, that's why the FDA has issued a new set of rules to make sure these devices don't become easy targets for hackers and cyber criminals. Now, from now on, medical device makers must show the FDA how they plan to keep their devices updated and secure from digital threats. They also must provide a list of all software components using a software bill of materials that go into their devices so they can, can any vulnerabilities can be quickly spotted and fixed right away. Now, these new rules are part of the law that Congress actually passed in 2023, which sets some basic cybersecurity standards for medical devices. Now, the FDA is also looking for into how to actually make sure the medical devices are serviced securely and safely and is asking for feedback on this topic. So we actually provide some of that. The FDA's actions are part of a larger effort to actually boost the security and resilience of health IT. But experts actually warn that there's still a lot of work to be done here and to prevent hackers from compromising those medical devices and putting your patients at risk. Now, the FDA's new guidance is an important step in the right direction, but it's just one piece of the puzzle. Now, I'm going to bring Cheaper back in here because, you know, what are your recommend? You're a network guy. What are your recommendations here on how to protect medical devices from cyber threats? Well, actually, I think this is a really, really good first step, mostly because Kurt has actually brought this up when we talk about this theme. And the problem is right now, or at least until these rules take effect, a change even in, say, something like um, modifying, say, a CT machine, you actually have to get it recertified even though you're just patching bugs. Well, I, this might be blowing it a little bit out of proportion, but there has been horror stories about medical instrument people saying they can't change X because it was approved with Y. Um, it's, it's frustrating. And I'm, this is just me, you know, talking out loud and thinking out loud that the FDA, I think, is trying to close those loopholes and make it easier to do things like major bug fixes, um, you know, adding this and that, maybe changing libraries if a um, DLL or something has been found that's um, compromised. Make it easier and faster for medical instrument developers to make intelligent changes. Um that we all know should be done, but their hands have been tied. And if you've ever really looked hard at the regula regulatory issues surrounding a medical instrument maker, you would throw up your hands in disgust and walk away because they are convoluted with a capital C. So I think this is a great move in the right direction. Um, I think some of the things that are changing are... Uh, in the about time category. And, you know, anyone with a good software background has been throwing up their hands because why hasn't this been done sooner? And it's because when you have a uh, large governmental agency involved with making rules, they're going to try and, you know, kill an ant with a sledgehammer. And, <laughs> it's true. It's really true. Now, I, I think it's definitely a good step in the right direction because obviously you always tend to look at organizations, especially they go and look at the medical devices that they're purchasing and they want things that are FDA approved. And so if this means that these devices and these, um, you know, these IoT devices, whatever they are, are not marked as as FDA approved because they are not following the guidelines that FDA mm -hmm. provides, I, I think that's going to be a, that's going to be a ding on people's bottom line, like the people are not going to buy them because of that. And I think, you know, that means that 
organizations are going to have to step up and start following these things. It's almost a forcing function for them to do so. Um, but I think there's still the problem is there's still a ton, a ton of devices in this world right now that are already out there. They're already mm -hmm. insecure and they're already having problems. We've talked about this before. You obviously make sure things are patched. Make sure you're using you're updating passwords regularly. Make sure things are not ac have access to the Internet if they don't need it. Um, be, be careful of you know, making sure that your information on those devices are secure, um, you know, look for signs, obviously, of of cybersecurity access. Obviously, this is um, uh, assume breach scenarios where if you in fact people are trying to access the the un, the device unexpectedly, you should know that um, keep track of that. So there's there's lots of things that you can do to at least assist yourself and your organization on on making sure that you keep these things secure. Chibber, does anything else do you, you recommend to people to, to make sure that they're managing what they already have in their in their inventory? Um, air gaps are truly wonderful things. You know, um, it's not hard to set up, say, for instance, an isolated VLAN just for these things and don't give it Internet access. Don't <laughs> really don't make it so that the C, the CT scan operator can check their email on the console. That That's not a good combination. But I do want to bring up one other issue. As we start getting medical equipment that are, quote, not FDA approved because of these new rules, what's going to happen to them? Um, the used medical equipment market, I think, is going to explode. And I keep wondering where they're going to go. So if we have nice, strong rules in the U.S., are they going to go to second and third world nations? You know, I, I don't like those labels because they're um, they connotate the wrong things. But there are several have not uh, organizations that would probably be real interested in buying used medical equipment. But I'm hoping they um, exercise some intelligence on how they use that equipment and also protect their patients' privacy. Um, just because we change our rules doesn't mean it's going to make it affordable for everybody else. Right. Yeah. I wish there was a grandfathered rule where, you know, pre-existing devices, even if you buy them, are required to still provide uh, software bill materials are also required you to provide, you know, when, how long they're going to be, how often and how long they're going to be, you know, serviced and, and brought up to date. I feel like this is still needs to be a requirement. There's still a bunch of things missing there. Um, and yeah, I do agree. Like this is definitely going to force organizations if they have the money to upgrade and move these things out into the secondary market, uh, which, you know, there'll definitely be a flood out there of people trying to make back that cost. But that also means that manufacturers are going to want to make back their costs, right? Like they, th this, this is going to make it, this is going to cost them even more money to manage what they ship. Yeah. And I, I guess this is, again, my personal opinion is oh, what happened folks. Um, this is actually doing things that make sense. If nothing else, that software bill of materials should have been something you had internal. You know, if now, you know, if wishes were fishes, you know, there's, there's a lot of wishful thinking going on here. And I'm, I'm hoping and praying that the DevOps people, well, development folks for a lot of these medical instrument companies have paid attention. Um, and that software bill of materials really should have been part of their original documentation, even if it's only internal. So, if you guys have been paying attention, maybe just maybe this would be a new set of rules that are easy to comply with or should be easy to comply with, or I wish were easy to comply with. Choose your, you know, A, B, or C. There's a lot of things that can be done, should be done, but have they been done? <laughs> 